Hi, this is John Lawrenceville, and this video is a good description of the recipe for making the bed bug killer solution. What you need is a package of yeast, two cups of sugar, uh, warm water between 105 and 110 degrees Fahrenheit. You mix them together, you pour them in your traps, and you attract the bed bugs, and hopefully they climb in and die. Okay, so that's basically the general description of the uh, bed bug solution. So uh, I have a little bit more experience about making the traps, and uh, so I'm going to tell you how I believe you should go about doing it because I no longer have bed bugs at all, whatsoever. I know it's been years since I've made that last video, those videos, and I'm, I've, I've been really lazy. I'm, I apologize. This. You uh, subscribed or you hit the notification button, whatever, and now it's years later and you finally get to see this video. <laughs> okay, so here it is. Uh, with the yeast, you need it activated so that it will consume the sugar, water, and create the carbon dioxide or whatever that stuff is that makes your house smell like uh, warm bread. Now, I recommend after two weeks of it sitting there, capturing and capturing the uh, bed bugs to uh, replace the solution. Now, uh, what I did was, is when my curiosity got the better of me, I would take the trap and look inside, and whatever bed bugs there were, I'd admire it, you know, look, look it over, see if there's something I might need to do to fix whatever problem I didn't know was there. I'd dump the solution, I'd dump the bed bugs into the toilet and flush them, and I would keep the bed bug solution for a total of two weeks, and then I would dump it out and get a new solution made and pour it in there. Okay, that's why you need the. 105 to 110 degree warm water it's for the bed bug for the uh, yeast to activate now uh, how do you know when the yeast is activated even though you have that warm temperature because uh, you will get foam on top of your water a lot of foam don't just get a little bit of drizzle of foam like um, like you put your hands in some water with dish soap in it and you you know squeeze it you know slap around in it for a second or two and you see a little bit of bubbles uh, white soap bubbles no more than that. I'm talking about covering the entire surface of your uh, of your water, sugar water with yeast. Now, I'll tell you how it happened with me. I got lucky on the first try. I uh, turned on the hot water in my sink, let it run for a little bit so that it's fully hot. And I had a thermometer and a cup down below and it would fill up with the water. And while it was still running, uh, I let the temperature, you know, level off. On the thermometer and look and see what the temperature was. Now, uh, at first it wasn't hot. It was at first it was too hot. So what I did was I went to my uh, hot water heater and I lowered the temperature down on it. It doesn't have any numbers. It just says something like pilot, warm, uh, hot, and then three or four uh, black dots until I got to scalding or whatever the last one is. Anyway, I got I put it down to where it just said hot, and I uh, took a shower so I could use up the hot water, you know, a lot of the hot water, and I could hear the hot water heater, you know, percolating because it's creating new hot water because I'm using, taking a shower and the hot water heater's in the bathroom with me. So I got done with the uh, shower. I waited a couple hours to, you know, let everything all settle, get to it, you know, the temperature it would normally be at, and turn on the hot water in the sink and do the same thing over again. And this time the water was 105 degrees Fahrenheit continuous. So I had the temperature I needed. So here's what here's what I did is um, I poured uh, I, I filled up a half gallon or two quart container. I filled it up about a fourth of the way up with the hot water, and I added two cups of sugar into the hot water uh, of the half gallon container. I stirred it all up very well. Till I, could, till I couldn't see any more sugar in the water that wasn't blended. You know, because if you don't do it right, you got some sugar on the bottom floating there or sitting there or whatever. So I, you know, I blended it real well, you know, just stirred and stirred and, you know, make sure I, you know, got it all stirred up. And then I filled it up the rest of the way with the, with the hot water. That's 105 degrees. Now, uh, the, the temperature difference is critical because look it up on the internet, it'll say something about proofing or something. So it's like, 100 and 105 degrees, it'll activate the uh, yeast, but 
it won't do this or that or whatever. So 105, 110 degrees is basically where you want to be at. So that's the internet about activating your yeast. It talks about activating dry yeast. I know there's choices out there. I just bought what was at Walmart. It's like three, a three packet of whatever for like a buck and a half or two. Anyway, buy a bunch of those so you don't have to keep shopping. And stock up on your sugar too. So that uh, you don't have to keep going to the store for it. Unless you feel like going to the store every time. Anyway, um, so I got a half gallon container full of the sugar water. 100, 100, hot water. Anyway, um, I got a coffee cup. One of those well insulated ones. Because it's something I bought from the store that, you know, Goodwill for like a buck or 50 cents. That uh, keeps everything cold for a while or hot for a while, whatever you put in there. Anyway, it was a small coffee cup looking thing. And I put in like a teaspoon of sugar. Just add more sugar in the sugar water. So I could help get those get that uh, yeast going. Anyway, I just put poured in a teaspoon of sugar into that coffee cup. Uh, I poured in the... Uh, uh, the sugar water I already made, I poured it until the coffee cup was half full, and I blended the sugar water with the that was from the half gallon container. It's in the coffee cup. Blended it with the sugar that's in the coffee cup. Stirred it up, you know, make sure all the sugar was dissolved. Then I poured in one package of the, of the yeast and stirred it up very well. Now it was it was only half full. The coffee cup was only half full. I left it that way. So I'm just trying to get the yeast to activate. That's it. I want because according to the internet, I'm supposed to see foam. Now, the uh, the whole thing, when I set it down, just let it sit there, uh, I waited about five or ten minutes, probably about five minutes, because I wanted to see if it was any foam. So when I came back to it in the kitchen, uh, the, the coffee cup was half full of everything, and now the coffee cup was like three quarters full. And what made it three quarters full was the foam that was on top of the water, the sugar water. The foam was on top. So it was a lot, it was a lot of foam. I went, you know, blowing onto it, sort of like a hot cocoa, to move away the foam to see if you can see the bottom, you know, see the, the fluid. And I couldn't see any fluid. I, I had a lot of foam. I'm like, alright, it's working. The yeast wasn't a bad batch. If it was a bad batch, I would have left it the way it is and uh, added another package of yeast. Stirred it up, you know, with everything that was in there, and waited another five minutes and see if that would work. If it didn't work, I'd dump everything out and try over again with a different package of yeast because the water temperature would no longer be in the range that I would want. And uh, thinking back on it now, uh, I would have done the, the yeast thing first in the coffee cup. I would have had hot water from my sink. I would have made sure it was 95, I would make sure it was 105 degrees and I poured half, you know, filled the coffee cup halfway with the water from the sink, hot water from the sink. I'd add a teaspoon or two of sugar into the coffee cup and blend it, blend it together add in the yeast, stir it up. Five minutes later, if there's a lot of foam, like, you know, like I just told you about, then I would have done the half gallon container of the sugar water and poured in the uh, coffee cup stuff into that sugar water. That's what I would have done. If, uh, you know, because uh, since I know the yeast works, then I poured in that half gallon container and I know everything's working smoothly. The yeast has plenty to eat and all that. Um, I guess it really doesn't matter uh, now that I think about it because um, I, what I want is the yeast to activate and that's what I got because of the foam. So now the, the warm water that was left over it's no longer 105 degrees because it's been sitting for five, five minutes in that half gallon container. The uh, coffee cup with the foam in it, uh, you know, it's got the activated yeast. So I just dump that in the half gallon container, stir it up. That's what I pour into my, uh, my drinking bottles that, you know, made my traps. Okay, now, now all that's made and it's ready to go. Uh, here's what I would do differently uh, to improve my chances of uh, catching the bed bugs in a trap and not letting them escape and being able to drown them in the toilet. Or if you feel like burning them, whatever. Uh, anyway, um, get a container that's made out of plastic to, because the uh, if the container of uh, plastic has walls that are vertical, not slanted like a cereal bowl, but vertical, straight up and down, then because uh, I use those microwave containers you would use for heating your stuff up for lunchtime at work. Anyway, uh, 
you want to wrap the container with a paper towel it's from the bottom all the way around to both both edges so that way you could take the uh, paper towel on the inside of the container so when that container is sitting on the floor with a paper towel wrapped around the bottom of it on, and the sides uh, when it sits on the floor and the bed bugs are attracted to it because of the uh, sugar water or yeast solution that's in the center of it the bed bugs will get to the wall of your container they'll be able to climb up because of the paper towel their legs can crawl up that paper towel and when they get to the other side and they start to go down about halfway down is where I taped off the paper towel so when they get that tape they'll slide off the paper towel they'll come off the paper towel slide down the tape slide down the vertical wall of your container and go into the container itself and hopefully be trapped there so if you've done that a paper towel wrapped around your container taped it on the inside then I recommend here's what I do to, to improve it I would recommend the uh, bottom of the container and the side walls that are not um, uh, touching the paper towel the side walls they're all uh, covered in some kind of cooking oil or maybe some spray can of you know Pam or something the reason being is once they get inside the oil will be make, make it slick in there so that they can't crawl out they might be able to walk everywhere because of the level floor of your container uh, but they won't be able to crawl out now I, w I was going to suggest filling it up with water where the paper towel doesn't touch the water but there's enough water in there to drown the, the bed bugs you could try that but I think it'd just be too much of a bother too much of a headache maybe the bed bugs don't fall off the paper towel into there because they're afraid of drowning I don't know so the oil if you have that in there instead of the water uh, doesn't matter what they decide as long as they fall in there and then they can't get out now um, your drinking bottle container that uh, has your solution in it uh, the experience I've had from someone else's containers they, they use the uh, water bottles drink, drinking water bottles those cheap Sam ones where the, you, know, you squish, the, squish the water bottle very easily when it's empty it's like almost like paper it's just so thin uh, that's the bottle we use for, uh, for their traps and they did not um, let's see I have the uh, Ziploc bag over the top of their bottles but when I visited, they no longer had the bag on there for some reason. I believe what it was is they wanted to look inside the bottles because what happened with them is the bed bugs crawled up the cereal bowl container they had with the paper towel wrapped around it. And, it was, and I thought it would still work properly anyway. I did not realize because of the slant that the, uh, they could have crawled out. Anyway, um, they, they bed bugs crawled in, got in the cereal bowl, they crawled up the water bottle, and then they were gone. And we're like, we know you got bed bugs, but why haven't we caught any of the traps? And I called them on the phone to find out, you know, if it worked and everything after three days. They said, they said, uh, well, there's none in the traps at all. And I'm like, what? But they were in the fluid inside the water bottles. So the water bottles were filled most of the way up. And, you know, I had the bag on them, but they took the bags off, that Ziploc bag. They took them off so they could look inside the water bottles. And the, the bed bugs are were inside the water crawling around eventually drowning because they couldn't get out so uh, after about two weeks they dumped out the, the nasty solution with the bed bugs in there and created uh, traps one more time all right so my recommendation is to oil your containers without getting the paper towel nasty uh, so that way when they get in there they can't crawl out and the drinking bottles uh, or whatever you use I use Gatorade bottles make sure they have a small opening like a Gatorade bottle does you know like about that big or a water bottle like that don't just pour the solution in the container itself that has the paper towel in it don't do that because not only do I do I not believe you'll get very many bed bugs but the surface area you know the water the sugar water or yeast solution the problem is is the entire top um, it's letting out the carbon dioxide and all that very quickly the house smelling like you know, warm bread for two weeks doesn't happen. It might happen for two days and then you don't smell it anymore. If you can't smell it, what makes you think the bed bugs will? I believe the traps last longer because you have that small opening, there's only a small part of it that's exposed to the you know, air outside for the carbon dioxide and all that stuff to spread out. 
I do recommend the Ziploc bags be, go over the top of the bottles because the carbon dioxide once it comes out um, the Ziploc bags uh, won't let it flow wherever it wants in the air instead it you know goes down it falls down because it's heavier than air and the little cracks between the plastic bag and your your water bottle uh, the carbon dioxide will go through it into your trap and the bed bugs will smell it come to it get captured and die if you kill them off anyway um, constantly constantly uh, dump out your traps of bed bugs and after a certain amount of time replace the uh, bed the bed bug juice so that uh, you can catch more bugs later if you ever stop catching the bed bugs uh, don't believe that uh, there are no more make yourself believe there's babies out there all the time uh, hatching coming to your traps and getting caught in there and you just don't see them let yourself believe that keep on using these bed bug traps for a year and don't just do one in a room do as many as you can afford that doesn't tick you off because I don't like having eight bed bug traps in my living room it's an eyesore whatever whatever reason you have if you can afford it which is very cheap to make if you have the time to do it and you can do it uh, if you want to get rid of them quickly do as many traps as you can in every room of your home so you can get rid of them as fast as possible now let's say in five days time uh, you've had bed bugs like crazy then all of a sudden you don't have them anymore great now just think of this if you can see those bed bugs the last time you caught them if you see those bed bugs in your traps and you dump them out and the next day you don't have any more whatsoever just remember those bed bugs have been having sex in your house they've been getting it on they've been having fun and the product of their fun is thousands of bed bug eggs sitting in your house waiting to hatch and when they do hatch they're the basically the size of the top of the white hairs on your arm imagine those hairs in your arm that are curved over where you can see a black hair on your arm or you know if you're fair skinned or whatever you got just white hairs in your arm imagine lifting that up and seeing the very pointy top of your hair and making that and then that thing is like a bright white or if you got black hair like mine just black or brown that little dot that's the bed bugs that you cannot see because you're not, you got to have them up close to see them check out my video where they were stuck on my water bottle you'll see those white dots I'm talking about so those babies have been having been, uh, sitting around in your home I don't know how long it takes them for the hatch and do you want them to have fresh meat you to uh, go to to become adults because you got rid of your traps because you didn't see them anymore no leave them traps out constantly you refill them every week or two I would I did mine every two weeks for about a month or two I think it was like total I'm guessing here about five times I've refilled them every two weeks and then after that um, I made sure that all my furniture my bed everything was covered with sheets the whole time so whenever I got home I took my shoes off and, and, and uh, tied the shoestrings together and put them up on a hanger hang them up on in the closet thing and then I would sit down on my couch or chair or whatever kept my feet up off the floor and that way uh, those bed bugs couldn't crawl up me and then when I would go to bed I'd go to the bathroom first took a shower and got my undies pajamas whatever it is you want to wear got them out in the bathroom set them on the sink or whatever did my shower dried off and I, I would usually go to bed butt naked with, with the clothes with me. So that way if I felt like wearing something, I would. And they wouldn't have bed bugs on them. Because they'd been hanging up in a closet or, you know, on the hangers or whatever. Or in a dresser. Hopefully the bed bugs didn't get me. Well, I thought I'd play it safe. And all I did was, is the, uh, the underwear, I had them in one of those uh, hanging basket things. You can hang off your cold rods bar. One of those hanging basket things. I had my socks and underwear in it. And uh, I grabbed one of those when I got out of the shower and went straight to bed. I had the, the mattress, the uh, plastic covering it. Went straight to the bed and put on my undies and I'd lay on the bed and that's where I'd sleep for the night. And when I got up in the morning, <coughs> I'd uh, get dressed for work and get everything on, shoes and socks, everything. And then I'd sit on the couch or chair in the living room with my feet up off the floor until it's time to go to work.
I did that for a very long time. I want, I've never had experience with bed bugs. I do not want that experience ever again. And the amount of, m amount of money I paid, which was basically just converted into time, the time I paid to uh, not have bed bugs anymore was worth it. To not get bitten anymore, to not have it in my home anymore, to be able to socialize with people again. You know, the money I paid was actually time I paid by having plastic over everything, make sure the traps were still working and, you know, everything. So, you've had the videos of the aftermath of doing bed bug traps, and now you have a better video on the recipe for bed bugs. I hope this works for you, and I hope my camera is actually recording this because there's 21 minutes have gone by, and once I tell it to stop, this bitch saying didn't capture media, it really ticks me off. <laughs> Let's find out if it works. This is John Lawrenceville saying please subscribe and give me a positive or negative comment, whatever you feel like. Thank you.